so hello everybody uh, so in the next few classes we'll be talking about polymers polym the, um, discussing polymer physics so in this class we shall be giving a quick introduction and talking something about ideal chains so to begin with uh, what are polymers and why should we be discussing them so as you would have studied in your class 11 and 12 Uh, polymers are basically chemical units called monomers and they are connected with each other uh, by bonds by chemical bonds right so these are extremely long chain macromolecules so and then uh, you would have known in your chemistry class typically polymers is touch uh, taught in chemistry that you can have various uh, kinds of polymers of uh, different monomer units with different chemical units of monomers and you might already know uh, that polymers are ubiquitous uh, we use it from buckets to all sorts of materials plastics and so on and so forth right but this is a polymer physics course and here we won't be talking so much about uh, or at all about the chemistry of monomers and so on and so forth instead we'll be Uh, talking about very generic properties so for a polymer physics course we'll be thinking of monomers as spheres of course they could be ellipsoids as well but uh, let's start simple and monomers as spheres connected by springs so what you have is this is a monomer there is a monomer they are connected by harmonic springs uh, and uh, hence you can form a long chain molecule with n monomers n being the number of monomers in the chain and what is interesting about polymers and polymer physics that it is an object with many degrees of freedom right because uh, the first approximation you can say that uh, these monomers can take various positions in space so this entire polymer chain can have multiple conformations right if f the free energy equal to u minus t s then these multiple conformations constitute of various different microstates uh, without any energy cost so free energy is essentially uh, comes from the entropic term is a huge entropic term without any internal energy cost uh, and uh, basically you are studying the properties of an object with multiple degrees of freedom okay so just to talk, discuss this a bit more so um, a single object a single polymer chain uh, is the physics of objects with multiple degrees of freedom which corresponds to and because these uh, monomers can take various positions in space subject to the constraint of bonds thereby they can take multiple conformations so if you say that the first monomer in the chain is specified by x y z then basically the position of the second monomer is specified if you um, if you basically if this length remains the same suppose it is small l and if you specify theta and phi then the position of this monomer is specified similarly with respect to this monomer if you specify theta 2 and phi 2 the angle of this bond with respect to this bond then basically the position of this monomer is specified and so on so forth so you can basically calculate if you have n monomers how many degrees of freedom there are and uh, if you specify those it it corresponds if you specify each of these degrees of freedom that conform uh, that uh, basically is one conformation and due to thermal fluctuations uh, this particle could move in this direction this particle could move in this direction and so on so forth for each of the monomers in the chain and that would correspond to another conformation the next instant all these particles would move again due to thermal fluctuations and that will be another conformation so basically 
uh, it's an object with multiple degrees of freedom. Moreover, you can have different properties of each of these individual monomers. For example, these monomers, some of those monomers could be charged. Some of these monomers uh, could be very miscible with the solvent or all of them could be miscible with the solvent or none of them could be miscible with the solvent and thereby the number of conformations it would take uh, as a consequence of this interaction would be different. So, but those in addition give extra degrees of freedom to control the properties of monomers. And moreover, this chain could have, uh, could be a flexible chain or there could be an energy cost to bend the chain. So in which you see that it's a rigid polymer like DNA. If you're looking at DNA at the length scales of fives or tens of nanometers, then it behaves like a rigid polymer chain. So as you see, not only the positions, but by changing the properties of the monomers, by chemically suitably changing them, right? Uh, you can add extra extra properties, and the polymers can have a certain range of conformations, or they can take different structures. And playing with these different degrees of freedom to get different structures, different patterns, different properties, different dynamics is the topic of polymer physics. So even before we start a proper class, uh, so let me basically tell you a bit more about what polymer physics look at. As I already told you right at the beginning, that polymer physics look at generic properties of polymer physics. We are not interested at what temperature there's uh, methanol melt or uh, not methanol i uh, suppose isopropyl alcohol with uh, 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 some some polymer chain of particular monomer constituent uh, that would melt at some temperature and uh, some other polymer with a different monomer would uh, maybe have a boiling point of a different temperature or a melting temperature uh, uh, melting a different melting temperature so we are not interested in particular system specific properties. We are more interested in more like scaling laws, generic properties. Suppose, uh, as an example, uh, that how does a polymer size, the average mean size of a polymer, which is measured by something called the radius of gyration, which we shall discuss soon after. Uh, how does this polymer size scale with the number of monomers in the chain, where alpha is an exponent, and depending upon what the microscopic interactions are, uh, alpha can take, if you take a, a random walk polymer, it can be half, but for a real polymeric chain dilute, it could be uh, 0.6. So we are looking more at the generic properties in terms of scaling laws, general phase diagrams, in what organization, what structure uh, do these polymers take? as you change, say, the temperature, as you change, say, the solvent properties, as you change, say, the charge, right? So we are really looking at the organization and pattern formation of a bunch of polymers, or we could look at individual polymer, dilute polymer systems. Uh, I already said that we are not particularly interested in a polymer physics course uh, to describe uh, if we change one chemical unit of a monomer for, from A to B, how does the properties change? We are not interested. Okay, it will change in some manner. It will change the melting point, for example, or change the viscosity. But we would be more interested as you change the length of the polymer chains, what is the generic behavior independent of the microscopic chemical unit, right? Having said that, uh, please realize that polymer physics fo uh, folks have to depend on polymer chemists to, to give them properties, uh, give them polymers with different uh, 
polymer characteristics or property characteristics. Yes. So if you're doing an experiment, you better collaborate with chemists because uh, to have interesting properties and to make such polymers, you can say that, okay, this architecture of polymer would have certain interesting properties, but to make them, you have to rely on chemists who are very good with uh, making bonds and different architectures, right? Uh, so polymer physics, so which is basically uh, a study of the statistical physics of entropy. It's basically a, a object with many degrees of freedom and you could have many polymers of different behaviors, and characteristics interacting with each other. So this is polymer physics, statistical physics of long chain molecules, macromolecules, if you like. Uh, depending upon what question you are asking. So they, of course, interact with chemistry because chemists make the polymers. Many of the biological systems, proteins, DNA, right, uh, they are all polymers. And even if you like your actin uh, molecules or the microtubules, they are extremely stiff polymers again whose length can change, of course. It's a non-equilibrium system. So a large amount or most of the biological system within the cell, or even uh, the collagen molecules which uh, build up tissues or interconnect maybe the cells, they're again polymeric in nature. Uh, polymer physics also talks with chemical engineers because chemical engineers again make and study mecha uh, mechanical and chemical properties of polymers, polymer gels, right? Um, they can uh, synthesize and connect polymers, uh, molecules, they connect molecules to make polymers and study their various properties, which are very useful. And depending upon what question you are asking, whether you're worrying only about the use or trying to understand some basic science, uh, Polymer physicists interact with chemical engineers because if you understand the basic physics, it could help you design new materials. Uh, polymer uh, physics people, of course, interact also with mechanical uh, engineers because if you have a bucket uh, of polymers, made of polymers, you want to know its mechanical properties. Uh, mechanical engineers have also been designing and studying properties of biomolecules. So you would see uh, biopolymer physicists also in the mechanical engineering department. You can check it up in ISC. Uh, polymers have very interesting flow properties in that uh, they are viscoelastic, which means that they show properties uh, of uh, both an elastic solid, but at long time scales, they can be, they can also flow like a liquid. And in my website, you can see there's some fun videos and there you can see very strange uh, flow behavior of uh, polymeric substances. So polymer since it flows and if you have polymer slightly mixed, uh, dilute polymers, uh, long chain molecules, dispersed in a fluid. It's a fluid flow characteristic changes. Uh, so again, fluid dynamics, polymer, both viscoelasticity and dilute polymer um, dispersed in a fluid affect the flow properties of the fluid in a huge manner. So fluid dynamics, uh, people study polymer physics, polymer physics, people interact with fluid uh, dynamics folks. And much of this polymer nanocomposites like tires to bones uh, in your body and cartilage, they have essentially long polymer gels, network of polymers in which uh, nanoparticles or micron size various other solid particles are uh, trapped. And this leads to very light at the same time, very strong, at the same time, very flexible properties. So you can tune the properties of polymer nanocomposites by having different materials, different length of polymer chains. So in this sense, polymer physics, though it exists by itself, also has interactions and they talk with various other branches. Uh, 
uh, of or science uh, topics okay so before again going down let me say what do polymer physicists uh, study uh, one can study polymer molecules in a dilute solvent so suppose the, uh, this is a fluid and here this is a polymer chain and this is another polymer chain and the polymer chain and so on and so forth this is dilute so basically in this case you'll be interested to look at single chain properties because polymer chains are not interacting with each other you could have a semi dilute regime right so th these are the various parameters we can change to look at polymer physics you could have semi dilute polymers where you have polymers and they just about start uh, touching each other so there is weak interaction between the uh, different polymer molecules and yet in between the polymer molecules there is solvent or else you could have a melt of polymers what is a melt it's absolutely pure polymer chain uh, but it is in the liquid form so in between the polymer chains you don't have any other uh, solvent so suppose you take your plastic bucket and you melt it so what you would have is basically long chains of molecules which are able to flow which are able to move around very slowly but in between those polymer molecules there's no other solvent right so that's a polymer melt so you could uh, uh, study polymer physics as a function of density and the polymer show the description of polymers at the microscopic level is slightly different. Uh, moreover, you could change the solvent quality uh, around the polymer. So the polymer molecule could like to be in contact with fluid, in which case it would basically uh, be in a extended configuration. The conformations would be uh, preferred extended conformations would be preferred whereas if the solvent is such that the polymer uh, monomers the monomers of the polymer don't want to be in contact uh, with the solvent molecules so suppose there's a high energy cost for them to be in contact then the polymer molecule would essentially collapse into a small globule so by just changing the solvent quality you can basically change the nature of conformations of a polymer molecule you could have charge on some of the monomers and that will again change the um, uh, that would again change the nature of the polymer conformation because the monomers now would be repulsing each other so it will behave more like a rigid polymer now you could also have that where uh, like in proteins or um, where only some of the monomers are charged or you could have like the dna where almost all the base pairs are charged you could study polymer physics by having different architecture of polymers and they again would have very different properties uh, so suppose this is the so-called star architecture from a cent certain central core there are various polymer arms which are emanating out so this each is a linear polymer so each of these is a linear pol polymer and they are attached at some center from which they are emanating and you could have the ring configuration basically you have a polymer chain which is uh, basically closed on itself and bacterial dna uh, are often ring polymers and it is hypothesized that ring polymers help in uh, reducing the entanglement and that's why uh, that bacterial poly uh, bacterial dna prefer to be ring polymers whether whether it's fully established or not i don't know but there's a, a lot of interest in ring polymers since they figured out that bacterial dna is a ring i could have branched polymer chains from a certain central uh, polymer chain various small segments of polymers are emanating out right you could have a polymer network like a fishnet so you have small polymer chains and that is cross-linked with other polymer chains in this way and it would form a mesh and again Paul, uh, you can mesh uh, you can enmesh small other colloidal particles of 
with properties of certain interest within the polymer chain and that basically gives rise to the area of polymer nanocomposites and you can basically tune the properties, the length of the mesh, uh, the nature of the crosslinks, you could have physical crosslinks, you could have chemical crosslinks and thereby change the properties of the polymer mesh. I, I told you that you can change the uh, and you can study polymer physics, the properties of polymers as you change the semi-flexibility, the bending energy of a polymer. So if you could have a rod-like polymer or a floppy polymer chain, moreover, you could have, you could tune the properties by having a block or random copolymers, which is suppose part of the chain. So this is a polymer chain. Uh, half of the polymer chain or one fourth of the polymer chain is one kind of monomer, maybe hydrophobic, and the other kind of uh, the rest of the chain could be hydrophilic. And if you have a large number of chains and you mix them together, question is what kind of structures, mesoscale structures, would they form? So this is another thing, or uh, you could say that one kind. This is one kind of polymer, which are charged. These are uncharged. Uh, so this would be so-called block copolymer. One side is one kind of monomer, other side is another kind of monomer. You could have tri-block. So this is one kind of monomers on uh, part of the chain, then another kind of monomer on some other part of the chain, and a third kind of monomer on another kind of the chain. And you can make them. Chemists do make them. So suppose this could be charged, this could be hydrophobic, and uh, this could uh, be, suppose, uh, rod-like chain or floppy chain, right? So you can change uh, multiple properties of each of these chains and look at what are the emergent properties of the system, right? So these are examples of block copolymers. And you could have also random copolymers. So you have two monomers of one kind and then uh, randomly one monomer of a second kind, say B, and two monomers of A kind, and then suppose four monomers of B kind, one monomer of A kind, and three monomers of B kind. And again, uh, basically, these would have different properties. So like if you think of proteins, then uh, you have 20 kinds of amino acids. So a long polymer chain uh, would have a sequence of amino acids to do its work. And it can get into a particular conf conformation. It can collapse into a certain conformation. Those are the properties of these different kind of monomers. So there you have basically a polymer with 20 kinds of different monomers, all right? Uh, in terms of architecture, you can also have the dendrimer. Basically, from one central point, you have some polymer arms emanating out. Each of these polymer arm is again dividing into three. Suppose here, so the, there are three arms coming out from here. Then each of this arm has again three uh, arms coming out like this. Again, this arm divides into three, right? And similarly, here you have another arm, and that divides into three, and then this divides into three. Now, this is a very strange object. So here you have an object where the center of the object is less dense, whereas the periphery is more dense. And there are discussions about uh, encapsulating medicines within this uh, hollow region in the center, and it would be basically surrounded by a thick shell of dendrimers of this outer 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 region which is more dense and when it reaches the right suppose ph or the right organ which has the right properties there uh, basically this medicine can be uh, released in a controlled manner so there's been some research going on. I don't know whether this has already reached uh, the, the beyond the lab to practical uh, to practical pharmaceutical uses or not. But uh, basically, this these star polymers and dendrimers are being planned or being designed, or their properties are being studied for use in nano 
medicine that's uh, what at least i uh, you read from the review papers in addition you could have living polymers so that basically you have polymers whose bond energy you have polymeric chains whose effective bond energy is the order of kbt thermal fluctuations normal bond energy is the order of electron volts so you so bonds can't break uh, due to the effective temperature but you could also design polymeric materials with bond energy order of kbt and then you would uh, bonds i mean the length of the polymer can easily change so if you change the temperature a bit or change the concentration of monomers a bit you can have a dist length distribution which is or uh, you have a set of polymers which are much longer so basically the length distribution itself is a function the concentration of the monomers or the temperature of the monomers right so so till now what we have been talking is fixed length polymers but here you have polymers they're called living polymers whose length distribution itself is a function of temperature and concentration you could have polymer colloid mixtures nanocomposites and we already discussed it a bit about it okay so um, okay so that basically uh, what I wanted to talk about. Okay, so basically I just talked about the solvent quality, right? So basically, I just this is just to show, wait, so this is, yeah so basically uh, i wanted to tell a bit more in detail uh, and this will be studying in much more detail actually so if a, if a single polymer in a solvent if it's in a good solvent this is a polymer which will be more extended spread out if you like right and the size of the monomer a measure of the mean radius of the monomer and we'll discuss this later in today's class that goes as n to the power 3 by 5. So if you have scaling n being the number of monomers to the power 3 by 5, that means you have a polymer in a good solvent. And then if you change the nature of the solvent or you change temperature and that also changes the nature of the solvent, then you can uh, go to a so-called theta solvent state where the size of the polymer behaves like a perfect random walk and the mean size goes as n to the power half right and when you have a bad solvent you can get into this very collapsed globule this entire chain has become extremely small and it goes into the collapsed globule and r goes as n to the power one third right so by changing the solvent quality, by changing the temperature, by changing temperature, you can change the solvent quality. You can go into these various states, right? So we already discussed this. Uh, moreover, polymers can be used to induce interaction between colloidal particles, the so-called depletion interaction. And this again is the origin is entropic forces. So typically what you study in condensed matter, hard condensed matter is electronic energies. So the interaction between, um, between particles or atoms come from elect electrostatic interactions. But here much of the interaction, as I said, is entropic in nature comes from the large number of conformations which are allowed or not allowed okay uh, i already told that polymers can have very strange flow viscoelastic properties and you can see some of this strange behavior on my web page there's something called uh, fun videos polymers are used for shape memory objects so basically uh, you know, you take a material, you bend it, but then you, if you heat it, it will come back to its original shape. And uh, that again uses uh, microscopic uh, tune in the in, uh, interaction between polymers to get shape memory objects. And you can get scaffolds of different strengths. You can use polymers, semi-flexible, soft, uh, stiff polymers to give shape Supposed to the cell, like collagen, 
uh, network gives shape to tissues or actin networks can give shape to the cells right and recently polymers with uh, movable crosslinks have also been designed and they have again a range of strange properties so by tuning these quantities charge semi flexibility crosslink density the nature of crosslinks um, then hydrophobicity dense polymer uh, or uh, dilute polymer system you can study or further tune the properties of polymeric systems to have a huge range of competition of interactions which uh, gives rise to extremely rich physics okay so just the last example just an example so this is basically a rand di block copolymer this is one kind of uh, monomers and this is another kind of monomers and you could also of course have tri block and you can have uh, this craft copolymer where this basic backbone is one kind of monomer and you have other arms attached and you could have four arm star block so you have a star polymer but half of this chain is one kind of monomer and this is another kind of monomer so these are all various tuning mechanisms to have materials of different properties of different behavior different nature right and uh, suppose uh, that the a kind so suppose uh, you have this uh, Di block copolymer. This blue one is the A, and red one is the B. And uh, the A and B monomers, suppose, don't like each other, right? Uh, so, so they want to stay away from each other. A wants to aggregate. I can tune the monomers to have such. And then, basically, the A monomers would like to, depending upon the ratio of sizes of the A block and the B block, the A. Molly, uh, the A monomers would like to aggregate so that they are mostly in contact with each other, and the B monomers might want to be on the outside, especially if they are, uh, especially if they are. Suppose the B segment is hydrophilic. Suppose right, so it will form again a core-shaped sh structure. But suppose you don't have a solvent; you just have large number of A and B uh, monomers in contact with each other, right? And you have a melt. Melt means there's no solution. They just have tons of uh, tons of these chains. in contact with each other then the number of microscope uh, microscopic structures they can form just by changing the relative lengths of the a segment and b segment is quite huge and this is just one kind of study so you can have basically these globules of suppose a molecules and then uh, in b matrix b is not shown here right and then as you increase the ratio increase the ratio, uh, relative lengths of a's and b's so suppose you have more of a compared to the b so if a is small you will get into this structure and surrounding it will be this blue uh kind of polymers else they, you can go into the cylindrical state you increase the length of a molecules more and then you can get into this bicontinuous gyroid phase so this is all happening at the length scale of say hundreds of nanometers or tens of nanometers this is, you are changing the microscopic structure by relatively changing the ratios of a and b segments now if you have a and b with equal lengths you get into the lamellar phase you have layers of a and layers of b and layers of a and layers of b now if b becomes smaller then uh, you can get into the bicontinuous gyroid phase again like this and again hexagonal cylindrical which is analogous to this now you have the other one so what is being changed 
I guess, uh, is the relative concentration of A and B, which is basically the relative size of A and B. And here is the miscibility uh, parameter, how much A and B want to repel each other. And then you can have an entire phase diagram just of a block copolymer with so many different kinds of microscopic structures. So I hope I have built a case that uh, polymer physics is physics of uh, an object with multiple degrees of freedom. In addition, the properties of each of these monomers can be changed in myriad different ways. And this gives rise to extremely interesting and non-trivial microstructures, which in turn, uh, so these are emergent properties of interaction. And this in turn can show very interesting, non-intuitive behavior properties at the macro lens scale. With this introduction, I intend to go more deep into polymer physics and we will be uh, talking, we won't be talking, we, we don't have time to talk about all of these things, right? So we will give you an introduction to some very basic stuff so that it enables you to study the more interesting works because the interesting work is being done by combination of changing the different properties. But um, we will be basically setting up the basic language of polymer physics. When you read a polymer paper, it, it will say, okay, it's hydrophobic, it's an ideal chain, it's a random walk polymer, it's persistence length is such and such. Uh, it's persistence length when you're talking about flexible and non-flexible polymers, right? The DNA is flexible at this is uh, rigid at the length scale of 5 to 10 to 15 nanometers. But beyond that, it behaves like a, at a larger length scale, it behaves like a flexible chain. So, so we'll be talking about introduction to polymer physics, ideal uh, polymer chains. Then we'll be talking about semi-flexible polymers. But ideal polymer chains, uh, you assume that uh, to be a random walk. But real polymer chains, they cannot... Uh, basically uh, cross each other and this leads to self-avoiding uh, random walks and we shall discuss that flurry theory the concept of theta temperature where a polymer behaves like the ideal chain polymers in a solvent entropy of mixing and that is the so-called flurry huggins theory we shall talk about rubber elasticity basically in rubber elasticity, the elastic moduli increases with increase in temperature. For normal materials, you know, if you heat, the system becomes more soft, the elastic moduli decreases. But for polymeric materials, the elastic moduli, uh, like Young's modulus, or elastic, right, um, it increases with temperature. And that is because of the entropic nature of interactions. We shall discuss force extension curves for flexible and semi-flexible chain because often you pull at chains using uh, AFM. And from that, you deduce the microscopic properties. We shall be discussing a bit about semi-dilute chains. And in the last class, we'll be discussing polymer dynamics. OK, a very brief introduction to polymer dynamics. And uh, yeah, so now let's talk of polymer physics in greater detail. This was just an introduction, which is long enough, I guess. <laughs>